relativity. It's absolutely just kind of mind-blowing. Um, and that's why I'm really excited to talk to you about this. So with Galilean transformations, this is all about uh, reference frames and looking at uh, what's going on when we measure uh, position as well as velocity. So we're going to always consider uh, one reference frame. We're going to call it S. So S is going to be the stationary frame. And we're going to have S primed, which is going to be a moving frame of reference. You're going to see that's going to make things kind of interesting. The good news is these derivations are really easy to do. Uh, we have this right here, which is in your data booklet. So X primed equals X minus VT, where X is the position in the stationary frame. And let's maybe put units to it. Position, that would be in meters. We have X primed, that's the position in the moving frame. That's also in meters. So if you think about the primes represent moving frame things, right? Uh, now V is going to this be the speed of the moving frame with respect to the stationary frame. What's often used here as an example is like a train or something like that. It's always a boring example of a train, but there you go. So imagine that you have a train and the train is actually moving. So if you know, then we're going to talk about what happens if you do stuff within the train and what will someone who's outside of the train, what will they see? That's an example of relativity. So it doesn't have to be so crazy. It's going to get crazy later, trust me. But uh, it starts off actually pretty straightforward. So a speed, that should be measured in meters per second. And we have time, which is going to be in seconds. Uh, and at this moment, I'm not saying uh, different kinds of time. You might be wondering about that, but for right now, we'll leave it. So what this does is this is just a way to transform. That's what it's called. A way to go from one position to the other position. It's all about you know shifting it off by this factor of how much it's actually moved by. So this is the, the way it works here. Let's do the other tra uh, transformation. That's the one for speed. So for example, uh, now we have an object. It's moving within a frame. Um, and the example that's always used is so boring but we'll use it anyway. It may as well be. It could be like a train here. And so you're going to have u primed equals u minus v. So we're going to say this. Um, let's start actually with v. We'll do that one actually first, I think. So let's do v. So v will be the speed of the train itself. So imagine that this train is actually moving. It's actually moving with respect to, you know, an observer who's not in the train. So maybe, you know, this is, this is me here and I'm watching. So yeah, I'm watching what's going on. Let's go. Looks like I've got like laser beams coming out of my eyes. But, so this is me watching this train move by. Now, within this train, you could have something happening. Like, I don't know, maybe you, uh, you're you walking, maybe. So maybe you're actually, maybe you decide to walk some speed. So let's look at what goes on here. V is going to be the speed of the moving frame. In other words, in this case, V is the speed of the train. So that'll be in meters per second. Now, u prime, that's going to be the speed of the object measured in the moving frame. In other words, if I'm, if I'm sitting in this train, so this is, let's say this is uh, u. Uh, well, I call it u prime, actually. So u prime will be the speed of u walking with respect to u in the train. So if you're sitting in the train and you actually go for a walk in the train, that's u prime. That's the speed of u, uh, I shouldn't say u, the speed of the object measured in the moving frame. Then again, the speed, well, those are all uh, nice and easy units, aren't they? This is a um, meters per second. And then we've got the speed of the object measured in the stationary frame. Now, what does that mean? That would be, how fast would I see this person walking in the train? So can you see in this case here, I'd have to add up these two. I'd have to say, well, it would be this V plus this V. That would be sort of, that's what I would see it being. I like this all aboard the fail road. I'm sure that's photoshopped. That's awesome. Uh, and actually, uh, I thought of something. When I was just writing these and preparing for this, I was uh, reminded, you know, these dumb train examples, because everyone always uses a train example. I thought I would show you a scene from one of my favorite movies. You're probably going to think a lot less of me because it is the lamest movie ever. Um, but that's maybe why it's my favorite or one of my favorites. It's a movie called Top Secret. It's a movie made in the 80s. Um, now, those who know me know I love puns, especially sort of stupid puns and stupid plays on words. This is a movie just filled with them. It's like every few seconds there's a pun going on. So some people really hate it. My wife thinks it's the dumbest movie ever. I can't believe she's still married to me, but there you go. Uh, watching this as a kid, I used to watch it over and over again and just howl with laughter. So maybe you'll like it. It actually stars Val Kilmer. If you ever saw that movie, um, what was it, Top Gun, for example? He played Iceman. That's another 80s movie. So that just shows my age, right? You can see that. But I'm going to show you a scene from that just to show this train thing, okay? So let me just uh, get this started. Let me see uh, here. I'm just going to show uh, this video right here. Let's 
to maybe make it full screen if I can. So this is Val Kilmer here, and it's set in the uh, World War II time. Check this out. This is awesome. So he's supposed to be on a train. There's some Nazis, of course. I'm gone. That's so awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all about relativity, right? It's all about who's doing what speed relative to who. So, ha ha, you thought they were moving, but actually the background was moving. But this is actually the idea, one of the underpinnings of relativity. It's all about who's measuring what. See, if you're sitting in the train, it looks like the background's moving, right? You can be sitting in there perfectly happy. If you're at a constant speed, you won't really notice anything going on inside except for maybe some shaking or whatever. So um, I wanna show you an example then. So we have an example, the world's most boring example. Let's do it, let's do it with a train here. So we've got a, well, I like this, how to teach relativity to your dog. Uh, so let's say we've got a train here, really boring, here we go, and it's moving at a speed of 4 meters per second as measured by an observer on the ground. So here's me on the ground, so I'm watching this train move. So in this case right here then, this speed, remember this speed is going to be 4 meters per second, that's going to be uh, V. Now a ball is rolled in the train with a speed of 11 meters per second as measured in the train. Now what do we mean by that? We mean within the train's frame of reference, in other words, like in that dumb movie there with uh, Val Kilmer, um, maybe, you know, in that scene, maybe he would, you know, throw a ball at 11 meters per second or something. So you take this ball right here and you move it at 11 meters per second. And try to think what letter that is. If we go back right here, what letter that is, that would be u prime because that's the speed of the object measured in the moving frame so it's good to just label things the big key to doing relativity is just really taking your time and thinking who's measuring what then relativity becomes a lot easier so this is u prime we got v and the question is how fast is it rolling as measured by the observer on the ground in other words me who's sitting there watching this thing go by how fast will that ball seem to be moving now, most people are pretty good at this. They can see it right away, but sometimes the examples aren't so simple. So we'll just use that equation. That's a good idea to use it, right? So u prime equals u minus v. So I'm going to make sure to use that one. So I'm going to get myself a pen here. So u prime equals u minus v. I want u. That sounds creepy, doesn't it? I want, you. I want to find this letter u, yes. Uh, so what do I do to get u by itself? What do I do is I move the minus v over. It becomes a plus v, doesn't it? So u prime plus v, that would be u. And of course, then that becomes, let's see, u prime was 11, v was 4, so that makes u equal to 15 meters per second. Now, that wasn't exactly brain busting. Most people can actually look at this and sort of tell, oh, yeah, of course it's that. And just think, what if it was opposite? What if it was like a negative 11? Can you see that? Then you'd have, uh, you know, 4 minus 11. So in other words, you'd end up seeing it sort of go backwards and so on. There's all sorts of different conditions you could have because these could be positives or negatives. But just to show you that relativity doesn't have to be crazy hard. Okay, it starts off, the basic underpinnings are really straightforward. Just about who's measuring what and within what reference frame. That's it.